hi guys welcome back to my channel where the gnomes live this is Sharon Oyella and today I have another walnut project for you so I'm going to be working with this little walnut right here and I do have a previous video on walnuts and if you're interested in seeing that that link will be in the timestamps uh, below in the previous video I was working with some jumbo walnuts as well as with some smaller walnuts as well in that video I show you how I line a walnut and how I add closures and things like that and how to hinge a walnut uh, using fabric in this video we're going to hinge a walnut using a metal hinge. I'm going to show you how I made this window here. How I did these fold down floors. Made a little fireplace in there. This is a fold out floor here. A chimney with some smoke. And then this cute little stand here. Now this stand has a light in it. So when I put the walnut on there it looks like the walnut is lit up from the inside. I'm also going to show you how I add simple shelves inside this one here. There's going to be a part two to this video and that video is going to include uh, all this little tiny furniture right here that I made for this walnut. So this walnut is fully furnished and the furniture will be in part two. In this video I'm using a drill with multiple uh, drill bits. I'm also using a Dremel. All right, my friends, before we get started, I'm just going to let you know that I have a previous video on walnuts, and in that video I show you how I crack my walnuts without getting any cracks up along the sides. So that link is in the timestamps below. And with that being said, sometimes you get a walnut right out of the bag that's already cracked, like this one here, and it's an easy fix. Just put some tacky glue on one side, and then on the cracked part, I kind of open it up with my fingers there, and I'm putting the tacky glue on, and I'm going to rub it in so it gets inside that crack. And then I'm going to cover it with, um, we're going to get the excess glue off first. And then I'm going to cover it with masking tape. I pulled pretty tight there to hold it together while it dries. So about 20 minutes later, take that off, and the crack is still there, of course, but now it won't open. So you have a solid walnut again. There's a nice option if you have a shell that you really want to use, but it has a crack. So first I want to show you how I make the hole for the window. So you can make the window as large or as small as you want. Here I have two windows, one really, really tiny and one fairly large. So we're going to start with a small drill bit and a drill. Let's get started. So starting off the smallest drill bit that I have, I'm getting that hole started. I actually wanted a fairly large window. So what I'm doing here with the motion of that drill is making the hole big enough to get the next size drill bit in there. So I'm going to go back and forth. I'm doing this very gently. I know the video is in fast forward, but I'm doing it very gently so I don't get any cracks. So I finally had the hole big enough for the next drill bit. And I'll do the same thing. Get the hole started and then go round and round until that hole is big enough for the next size. And I keep going until I can fit this uh, little sanding piece in with my Dremel. Once I fit that in, then I was able to uh, make that window as large as I wanted. All right, so to put the window in there, I found that just gluing in a piece of plastic, there was too many gaps because the walnut is so uneven. So what I did to fix that was just surround the piece of plastic, which is just from packaging, by the way, um, with a piece of twine. So you saw me breaking the twine down a couple of layers and covering it with tacky glue and then wrapping that twine around my little window. And that worked out really well. And then I was able to glue that into the walnut and there was no gaps between the window and the walnut. And here I'm showing that I can, I was able to clean off the glue with some alcohol on a Q-tip. So now I'm putting the glue into the walnut and I'm using a pencil, the back end of a pencil, so I wouldn't get more glue on the plastic part, just kind of gently lowering that down into place and then sliding it into place and then I found I, I still had to clean off some excess glue so I did that by holding the window in place because it wasn't totally dry yet. Also I added another piece of twine around there just to build up that window frame. This twine is paintable once it's dry. And now I'm going to show you how I add my metal hinges. And these I ordered off Amazon, they're half inch hinges. You don't have to use a metal hinge though. In my previous video, I show you how I use uh, fabric hinges, which work just as well as metal ones. So don't worry if you don't have one. And what I'm doing here is I'm marking off where the hinge is gonna go and I'm gonna sink the hinge. I'm using black paint because uh, pen doesn't really work on a walnut. So now that I have my markings there, I can go ahead and sand down this part in between the two black marks where my hinge is going to sit. 
and I kept stopping and checking to make sure that I wasn't going too far because I just want the hinge to fit in there without any of the walnut opening up on the other side. So you don't want any gaps in your walnut. And I had a little spot there I had to sand down. So once I was able to slip it in there without any gaps on the rest of the walnut, then I went ahead and I glued it in. The glue I'm using is E6000 and it's the clear. A couple of tips when working with this stuff, get the smaller bottle rather than the large bottle because the large bottle I found tends to go hard before you get a chance to use it all. Also, it takes 24 to 72 hours to totally cure. So I have found that after 15 minutes of applying it, I'm able to work with the walnut, but you don't want to be putting too much pressure on that hinge because it will it will pop off. So it's totally fine after 24 hours, I found anyway. And yeah, so there's no worries of it coming off, but you have to leave it cure before you pull on it. And what I do with mine is I'll glue one side of the hinge down first and leave it sit for 15 minutes. It's really important to leave it sit for 15 minutes because uh, I found gluing them both in at the same time, like both sides, then the hinge has more chance of moving around or slipping out of place. So I put the one side down, leave it for 15 minutes, and then I put masking tape down on the hinge that's been glued in already. So the top hinge doesn't glue to the bottom. So I'm spreading it around there and I'm going to put the other side on. And I did try elastic bands to hold it together, but I found that wasn't enough pressure. So I ended up adding some masking tape here just to keep the walnut together so there's enough contact to make that glue stick. And even though these hinges are really tiny, they're still a little bit too wide for the walnut itself, the edge of the walnut. So I build it up with the E6000. So I'm adding it underneath there. I'm gonna leave it sit for 15. I'm gonna come back and add a little bit more. And that just builds up a nice wall in between the walnut edge and the hinge. Once it's cured, you can go ahead and paint it. And now I'm going to show you how I've added some shelving here. So I've done it, um, two different walnuts here to show you, you know, give you some options. And the first one is a little bit different than the second one because the second one has two, two shelves on top, but then I have fold out floors on the bottom. So I'm going to walk you through those fold out floors after I show you how I've installed the shelves themselves. So I'm using the cardboard from a cereal box and I'm going to double it up, but to get the form that I need, or the shape that I need, I use foil and I push it into the walnut until it fits in there quite nicely. And then I can transfer that shape onto my cardboard. And then I trace around it, cut the one piece, and I'll use that piece as a template to cut another. But first I'll have to file off the painted part or the shiny part of the cereal box. I just use an emery board. That way I'll get a good stick um, between the two pieces when I glue them together. And I'm going to let that dry, so I'm just holding this together with a couple of clamps. And once it's dry, I'm going to place it into the walnut, and then I'm going to mark off where I need to cut off the excess. And the part that I'm going to glue into the walnut, that edge, I'm just going to lightly file it with my emery board. And what that does is opens up that edge a bit, makes it wider, and it gives me a bigger surface to glue to, or glue on. You can see the difference between those two pieces there. Now I could add my tacky glue, and then just push it into the walnut. I do add extra glue around the edges, so once it's glued in, I'm just putting some glue on the top. And then I'll also put some in the bottom. Once that tacky glue dries, this floor is so solid. <laughs> and yeah, it's, um, it's a good method to use. If you find that there's some gaps in between the shelf and the walnut wall, you can fill that in with a piece of twine. And I'm going to show you that uh, with the other walnut that I did. Up top there, underneath, you can see there's a... Um, there's a bit of a brace underneath that floor and that's just a piece of twine. So I just peel apart the twine until I get a piece that's thin enough to glue in there. And I'm going to measure off what I need and then cut off the excess. And I'm going to add the tacky glue and I add quite a bit. And then I'm going to roll it between my fingers to make sure the tacky glue is completely covering that twine. And then I'll just push it into place. I use a little tool to push it up in there. And then I'm going to add some more tacky glue you can paint this once it's done and that twine actually gets super hard and it will never come off of there. All right, so now I'm gonna do my first fold down floor. And again, I've doubled up the cardboard 
And I've added a long strip here. This is just going to be a little tab that I can use to pull the floor down when it's all done. And what I've done here is I'm adding a fabric hinge. So I'm going to cover the one uh, side of the floor completely with the fabric. And then the other piece is going to fit into the walnut. And I'm going to have to paint this to match the walls, of course, once the uh, glue is dry. Okay, I'm just going to keep testing this to make sure that it folds down properly and that I'm happy with the placement. And once I'm happy with that, I can go ahead and paint the back wall. And it took a couple of coats that I didn't film, but I also decided to paint the um, fabric floor as well, make it look like a wood floor. So black and then burnt umber and a little bit of beige here to lighten it up. Added some lines to make it look like planks and it worked out really well. So now I'm going to do the other side, and this one is a little bit different. I'm going to make a fold-out floor instead of a fold-down floor. So the one piece, uh, I fit in there, of course, and then I make another one that's identical. And they're going to be placed over a piece of masking tape with the opposite sides uh, facing each other, of course. And you can see there's a little bit of space between the two pieces, and that will allow me to fold the floor together. So I use some masking tape to hold everything together. I'm going to cut around the masking tape. And I'm going to fold that floor together and make sure I can do that, and I can. Works well. So now I'm going to put a thin layer of glue here, and I'm going to add a piece of fabric on top. And now I can peel off the masking tape. A bit of the cardboard came off that masking tape, but that's all right. And I'm going to trim around there, adding a little tab that I can use to uh, pull the floor out. So instead of gluing the floor into the walnut like I did with the other shelves, I decided to add a bracket underneath using the piece of twine. That way I wouldn't get glue all over my fabric floor. So now I can glue underneath the floor and add that on top of the twine. And I'm just pressing it down. I'm gonna add some more glue underneath the floor just to make sure nothing moves in the future. And here I'm just testing out the floor to make sure everything works smoothly, and it does. There was a little bit of a dip on one side, so what I did to fix that, um, right here in the seam, there was a little bit of a dip. What I did to fix that was stick another piece of uh, cardboard underneath. So I just glued that into place and left a little lip on the outside. So when the floor was folded out, it rested on that lip, and that seemed to fix the problem. So this floor obviously doesn't hold down by itself. So what I did that is on my stand, I have a little piece of wire that I can move back and forth. And when the floor is down, that wire holds it in place. And we'll be going over this stand later on in the video. For one of the top floors, I decided to make it look like a carpeted floor. So I just cut a piece of fabric and now I'm gluing it in. These can be done ahead of time, but I was just winging my way along. And on my fold down floor, I decided to add a piece of wallpaper using scrapbook paper. And I'm just gluing that in there. And then to make a little door, what I did was cut a little piece of cardboard, painted that, and then I lined it with, or outlined it with some twine to make it look like a door frame. And I'm just adding a little piece of paper that I had rolled up into a little ball for a doorknob. All right, guys, before we move on, this little section here, I didn't film it, but it's just a little storage compartment, and that's the same way I built the pull down floor so it's a little cereal box board and then I used a piece of fabric to hold it in place. All right and behind that fold down floor I'm going to put a little fireplace so what I'm using is a paper cup trays and I'm cutting or ripping off little tiny pieces and I'm going to roll these up with tacky glue between my fingers to make little tiny stones. So I'm going to make a pile of stones and then I'm going to build myself a little fireplace. So first I, I painted in the very back of the walnut a little black section, and that will be where the fire uh, sits inside, which I'm just gonna, I'll show you in a minute. <laughs> but first I'm going to outline that little black uh, piece with my little stones. So each piece has to be glued in, of course, with tacky glue, and um, made them as thick as I could behind that wall without that wall touching it. And now I have to make a mantle, so I'm going to use a piece of cereal box cardboard. I didn't double this one up, I'm just using one layer and shaped it to the back of the walnut. And now I'm going to make the front of the mantle, the piece that hangs down in front. 
So I just filed off the paint there and I'm going to add a generous amount of tacky glue so I can just set my mantle right straight up and down, as you can see here. And then I'm going to leave this dry completely. So I'll just set it aside and leave it dry. Once it's dry, I was able to cut around it without anything falling apart. And I filed off anything that was sticking up there. And I'm going to test it out. Now I painted it before I stuck it in there, of course. And now I'm going to glue it in. And that worked really well. So there's my fireplace mantle. And now I'm going to make the stonework on top of the mantle. So I'm going to use a larger piece of the paper cup tray and just glue that right to the wall. And then a couple pieces around it just to make it more decorative. And now I'm adding in some of my fire. So what I did to do that was a little bit of glitter and a little piece of yarn where I've just a little tiny piece of yarn. Every piece that I tried was always too big, no matter how tiny I got it. So finally I got it to work. And I didn't film this part, but in between some of the stones that I did add, I painted in a little bit of black just to separate those stones and give it a little bit more definition. But all in all, everything turned out really nice, and that wall fits nicely over top. And now I'm going to build a stand for the walnut, but not just any stand. This one is going to be built around a tea light, so I can have a light option and stick the walnut on top, and it will look like the walnut lights up on the inside. So I did this in a couple of stages because I didn't know it was going to get as big as it did. I was actually going to make a small one like this and just build it around the tea light. And here's another one that's a little bit larger. But same thing, there was no tea light in that one, but I thought I was just going to build it like that. And then as the project progressed, <laughs> my stand got larger. And then I added mushrooms, which I've included all in this video. So let's get started. And these little uh, tea lights I get at the dollar store, and there was two different kinds, uh, two different flames. I was just showing you the difference there. Um, I take them off with pliers, but there's the bottom of the two different kinds, and they both come out the same way. You just pull up with your pliers. And... I wanted the um, bottom of the walnut to fit over top that light without creating any gaps in the walnut. So I'm just making the little hole in the bottom wider with my Dremel. And there we go. No gaps on the side, so I'm happy with that. And now I'm going to create a little stand that goes around what would look like a little piece of wood. So I cover the foil with masking tape. I'm going to leave the battery um, section open, of course, so I can get at it in the future. And I'm going to add some paper towels and just painting on some glue. You can use a napkin or um, paper towels, whatever you have on hand. And I'm going to paint the glue over top and making sure to overlap all the edges as I go around. This is how I do all my bark in my videos. And then I leave the paper towel to dry. And then once it's dry, I'll go ahead and paint it. And with all my bark, I do a black wash first. I'm just going to paint it all with black paint. And now I'm adding burnt umber over top that. And I'm not doing a solid color of burnt umber, I'm just painting it lightly over top just to get some of that black to show through in the background. And then I add another layer. Once that burnt umber is dry, I do cinnamon brown. Same thing, I'm not doing a solid color. I'm going to let some of that burnt umber show through. And then the final coat is some beige that I dry brush on with a feather brush. And like I said, when I started, I didn't know this project was going to grow in size. But here I am, I'm just adding some more foil and using a hot glue to hold it all in place. Once I've got the pieces on there, then I cover that with masking tape, and then I'm gonna do the paper towel. So I'm making sure all the seams where I've attached things are all covered with the paper towel. So you wanna make sure that you're overlapping so nothing falls apart in the future. And then I go ahead and paint that. And it turned out pretty well. And the reason why this project grew the way it did is because once I had the walnut and the stand together, I decided I wanted to be able to open up the walnut and display it open with the floors out and the furniture inside. So that's why I ended up adding those other pieces the way I did. And then I thought it would look better, more better with a mushroom on top. But then I had that little pocket, that little new pocket beside where the walnut sits. So that's what made me uh, make the second mushroom that will sit inside that little pocket. So I made the mushroom, as you can see, a little shape there. It would kind of lock in place when I had it all together. All right, so we're going to make the mushrooms. Now, I'm not a polymer clay expert, 
but these uh, mushroom caps are made out of polymer clay and the stems themselves are made out of foil masking tape paper towel and I did it that way because I only had a little bit of polymer clay to work with so I had enough to make two caps and that's what I did so I started with some red polymer clay or sculpey clay I should say baked the shape that I wanted and then I added some sculpey glue underneath and then I pushed in some white clay and smoothed it all out and then I added some lines and then I baked that whole unit together and then I dry brushed on a little bit of orange just to break up that red color and then I added some more glue on top this is special glue for sculpey clay and then I put in little bits of sculpey clay for those little spots the mushrooms have once I got all the spots into the glue then I baked everything again and then everything got a layer of um, varathane, water-based varathane. And here I'm making a stem, and like I said, it was made out of foil. So I'm just gonna hot glue that into place. Then I add my masking tape, smooth that out as much as possible. And then paper towel goes over top. Once that's dry, then I can go ahead and paint it. So let's take another look at the stem here. So it's formed to that main piece. When I put the paper towel on, I made sure to overlap those seams and then paint it accordingly. And the skirt of the stem is just paper towel that I, you know, kind of pull away from the stem itself. And the little one, I made it kind of bit hollow on the inside. So I could have like, looks like a doorway that goes inside. And then, like I said, there's that little piece that sticks out that kind of locks into place. And I did use tacky glue to put the, the cap and the stem together, but I don't think that's strong enough. So I'm just gonna add a dot of hot glue in the center here, and then I'll stick the cap on. Uh, this cap was made to form to the other stem. There's a little dip in the side, and I'm just gonna make sure that's facing the right way. And everything is looking good, so I'm gonna go ahead and add the tacky glue now. And I do believe this is strong enough to hold everything together, and it's good for display purposes, but any Sculpey Clay experts out there that know what glue to use to put a clay object on top of a non-clay object, I'd love to know what that is, so please leave me a comment. Alright guys, I mentioned earlier that I do have a piece of wire uh, for this floor and for this floor, and they're right here. There's one here. It's just thin gauged wire. I don't know the exact gauge, but very, very thin, and I just bent it over with my pliers. And poked it into the side here and here's another one right here I didn't glue them in or anything they're just you know you can move them around very freely so when I have my walnut in there and I want to open up the floor then I can push this wire over and that holds the floor down and when those are open and on display the my little mushroom here sits on the side Alright guys, the last thing I'm going to show you is how I made a chimney. Since we have a fireplace, we need a place for the smoke to escape. So the chimney is made from foil, masking tape, and paper towel, the same way I did the mushroom stem. And then I'm going to use paper cup trays to make the little stone work. And once I had the um, foil, masking tape, and paper towel dried, the very bottom part of it I flattened out with a pair of pliers, as I'm showing you here. So that is the part that I'm going to glue to the walnut. So a little bit of tacky glue and push it in place and leave it dry. Once that's dry, then I'm going to add the paper cup trays. So this one, I actually peeled apart one, the back layer of the paper cup tray to make it a much thinner um, material to work with. Then I glued it all in place. Once it was glued in place, then I outlined the stones themselves with some paint just to give them some definition. And then I covered everything with another layer of tacky glue. And the final layer of tacky glue is just so that the individual stones don't ever lift up in the future. Once that tacky glue is dry, doesn't that look great? This is a wonderful way to do stone work. I've done this in larger projects as well. And the final thing that I, that's an option is add a little bit of smoke and I use polyester stuffing. Any type of stuffing will do. And put a little tacky glue inside the chimney and then find something pointy to shove it down there and let it dry. And now you got smoke in your chimney. All right, guys, that will bring us to the end of this video. In part two, I'm going to show you how I made all this little tiny furniture and this little tiny character as well. That link is in the pinned comment below, or it's popping up on your screen. Go ahead and click that, and I'll meet you on over there.